my name is Ibrahim Higazi. Uh, today I'm speaking uh, about uh, 15 technique to exploit file upload pages. Uh, I'm currently a senior consultant at uh, Deloitte, Netherlands. Uh, I like to call myself as a security guy, but actually not this type of security guys, of course. Yeah, of course, no. Uh, yeah, I have been uh, to ranked as a top security researcher for Yahoo back for three months back in 2014 uh, due to finding uh, uh, vulnerabilities in their bug bounty programs as uh, Yasser Ali was already explaining uh, what bug bounty programs are. Yes, so that is agenda for today. Well, um, the core concept behind of why I'm explaining this thing is because uh, I really want developers to know how to fix their code in a better way and for the developers, have the, uh, for the attackers, or let's say, call it in a polite way, pen testers, or right hat hackers, um, how they can bypass the mitigations done by the developers themselves. So this is the agenda for today. I'll explain what file uploads is, what are the main components of file upload page, um, and then I will be explaining each part, like what are the developers doing to mitigate, for example, the file name um, validation, um, content type validation, file content uh, validation, I'll make like etc, and then how hackers can uh, bypass it. Yes, and then at, at the conclusion, I'll be giving uh, like uh, the best practice for developers. Uh, what, are, what is the best way you can mitigate uh, these attacks? You know, mit developers have to win at the end, right? Or hackers always win. Someone has to win at the end. Yes, this is uh, the target of the session. Of the session. It's like gathering uh, all the file upload by best techniques in one place. So for if you're a, a, a penetration tester or a bug hunter, you don't really have to go crawl the internet searching for how to buy best file upload thing because you have everything in one place, right? And of course, helping the developers. <laughs> yes, this is a teaser. Uh, this is a, a vulnerability uh, someone found in YouTube. Uh, this is the real etc buzz wd file of YouTube. So he was able to read the, the files on the YouTube server. And this is a real one. I'll be explaining this during the session. I just put it here as a teaser. <laughs> yeah, Arab people know what teasers is, right? Yeah. Okay, so the main file upload page is always uh, contains five, five main components. Sometimes the file size is not a part, but it always has to be sent with the headers itself, right? So yeah, first thing is the file name, which we do have uh, as a file number one. I'm not sure, yeah, you should be able to see it. And then the file type itself. File type is, is really based uh, on the extension. At some time, for example, if you are having a BNG, so it's always image backslash, uh, sorry, slash uh, PNG or MS BD BDF, uh, sorry, uh, if it's a BDF file, BHB is like application slash XPHB, something like that. Yeah, and then the magic number. So for the developers to, for the developers to um, validate the file content, there is no similarity between all files, right? But the similar thing is always the magic number. What's magic number? Magic number is like uh, the, start, uh, the starting line or uh, the file identifier. For example, if you have a, a GIF, GIF images always start with the GIF uh, 89, uh, 98, sorry, 89. Okay, GIF 89 or GIF 87, and then semicolon, and then the content of the image itself. So this is how uh, magic numbers work. Some developers are validating this. For example, WordPress, they have been using this. I'll explain also how we can bypass it uh, for that uh, sort of validation. And then the file content and the file size, of course. Yeah, let's go to bypassing developers validation scenarios. Okay, developers really love to do blacklisting. So, oh, PHP files? No, I don't want this one. Let's blacklist PHP. This is the first scenario. Can you, can you spot what's going wrong uh, into this uh, sort of validation? Is there, there something going wrong? Uh, I already wrote, uh, wrote the solution, but you have to think about it. What could go wrong with this uh, validation? Okay, so uh, the developers uh, mainly validate uh, the file names based on the regex regular expressions, as it's called. So this, uh, if uh, the third line, third line that starts with the if, th it has a, a regular expression that validates that the file has the extension BHB or BHB1 or BHB2 EX, etc. And then at the end, there is a, like a dollar sign. So this means that the, if the file ends with any of those extensions, but it does not validate the case insensitivity, something like, a, 
If you try BHP like uppercase, like BHP in uppercase capitals, it will bypass this validation. So this is the first validation uh, blacklisting thing done by the developers, how to uh, mitigate file uploads. They try to uh, make sure that the file does not end with BHP, but they are missing the case insensitivity checks. So you can just write uh, your, your BHP shell as like shell the BHP button capital, and it will bypass this sort of validation. Yes, second thing, second scenario, uh, blacklisting, and they have properly uh, validated the file uh, extension, the file case insensitivity in the names itself. They are validating everything actually. But because there is lots of other extensions, I mean like this is what's, what could go, back about, uh, uh, could go bad about blacklisting. You cannot blacklist everything because you are not uh, aware of every possible extension, right? And every day there is like uh, new changes in the technology so there might be a new uh, technology or let's say a new extension. For example, that file is called BHT. BHT is an extension that can also execute BHP files. So if they are develop, uh, they are, the developers are blocking every uh, file that ends with BHP, BHP1, in capitals and small and etc, you can bypass it using, for example, BHT file. So this is a how to bypass a blacklisting technique, but on Linux. What is the equivalent on Windows? Here we go. The equivalent is in Windows if, for example, the developers are mitigating or let's say blacklisting ASP, ASPX and this file, you can still use extension called A, uh, oh sorry, uh, because of the ASP.dll thing. Okay, so you can, if you're for this example, you can use some extension called ASA um, or CER. So what ASA and CER? Because we are normally know, know that uh, CER is like extension for the certificate, right? But no. Uh, the thing is, oh, uh, the thing is, in old IIS, it's not sold old, so it's version 7.5. Uh, uh, it really likes to execute the files that ends with uh, ASA as if this is an ASP file. So, for example, we have here uh, ASP shell, but it, it was just renamed to CET. CER, sorry, and it was uh, bypassing the file upload thing. Why? Because the developers is only blacklisting ASP and ASPX extensions. But still, you can execute the same ASP code, but with another extension. Yes, scenario two. Now, with to scenario three, uh, blacklist, bypassing uh, all executable extensions. So, for example, uh, the developer has blacklisted all the ASP, all the BHP, all the HTML, or HTML, BHTML, every, th every possible thing, actually. You can still uh, execute a stored XSS using an extension called EML. Do you know what EML is? Yeah, if you are using, for example, uh, uh, Thunderbird, Thunderbird is like uh, an equivalent for Outlook, but on Linux. You can also use it on Windows. Uh, yeah, when you export an email, you will export it as EML. So this is usually, if you are opening an EML file, it will be handled, uh, if, but, but this works only on Internet Explorer, actually. So you can exploit this only in Internet Explorer. Uh, yeah, in this case, uh, the, the storage XSS will trigger uh, because it will be executed as a sort of HTML uh, content. So you can see the file content in the black uh, sc screenshot. It just says hello and then some encoding for the XSS by load, which is like uh, just confirming uh, the word uh, Deloitte. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and uh, for that uh, link here is uh, more details if you are going to, if you want really to go uh, deep about the POC itself and how to exploit it. Because the encoding, the encoding is uh, uh, some, some sort of tricky thing. It's easy but tricky. Yeah, so we now know the blacklisting technique used by developers. What about the whitelisting? What if the developers are not blacklisting but they are whitelisting like only allowed extensions to be uploaded to their website? Okay, scenario number four. Can you spot what is wrong with this uh, uh, regex? What do you think is going wrong here in this regex? Yeah, so the developers is making sure that the file contains any of those extensions, but he is, making, is not making sure that the file ends with this extension. So if I upload some file called uh, um, shell.gbg.bhb, it contains gbg, right? But it ends with bhb. So he's only validating that the file contains that name but does not make sure that it ends with that uh, allowed extensions only. So this is a whitelisting technique. Uh, number four, uh, yes. So for example, in this regex, you can see uh, this is a website called regex uh, 101. 
You can use uh, this website to validate your regex against some sort of uh, strings, if it works or not. So yes, you can see, for example, I used the file .gbg.bhb with the same regex uh, used in the previous code, and it, uh, it bypassed it. It matches that the file contains gbg, but does not end in gbg, right? OK. Now scenario number five is uh, null byte injection. Uh, what null byte is? Can someone give us a hint? What null byte is? Yeah, null byte is a terminator for these people who comes from a C background. It's a sort of terminator. It's a hundred percent zero zero. This is what is what null byte is. I mean, like as a as a good, but PHP was forked from C, right? So they, it was mon, uh, mainly based on C. It have the same syntax. Whatever the issues are in C, it still uh, exists. Can exist in PHP. Yeah. So for the terminator thing, for example, some developers uh, will. Uh, um, yeah, validate on the file name, upload it itself. But if you name the file name is like a chill.bhb 100% 00, zero null by thing, gbg, what is going to happen? The thing is, the web server will understand only the dot and then first extension because 100% 00, zero is a terminator. So after the, after the bhb, uh, whatever after the bhb is terminated, it does not exist. You can say it does not exist. So it, the file now is named chill.bhb. You can also replace it uh, using uh, some hex representation. It also works. Still the same technique, anyway. Yeah, this is a sample code. If you are looking to, this I mean, this is how uh, how it will look uh, look like uh, inside the code itself. Scenario six. Yeah, uh, some websites because is you know is VG right? Is VG is a sort of images, but uh, it was nearly invented. Let's say it. It was. Uh, it, I mean, it appeared with HTML5 thing. When HTML5 when HTML uh, started to uh, grow, it started with uh, HTML5, SVG is simply XML content. So if the developer is allowing you to upload SVG image, you still can put some XML content, right? What can you do with XML content? Exactly, XXE also. You can, like, uh, you can do lots of stuff with XML, but uh, why developers would uh, trust SVG files if it contains XML? Because this is how developers think. Developers is always thinking about usability, not about security. They are thinking about how the customers are going to be satisfied using this application. I have to allow whatever that satisfy our customers, right? This is how developers work. And this is what we as hackers like. Yeah, this is the allowing video uploads thing. This is the exploit I said I'm going to explain that, uh, that has been exploited against uh, VK. VK, I guess, is a Russian uh, Facebook alike. Uh, also, um, Facebook.com had the same vulnerability. YouTube had the same vulnerability. And the thing is, uh, this, just to be honest, this is not about exploiting the developer's mistake. You are developing, a, you are exploiting a, a server-side library called uh, FFMBEG. Yeah. So FFMBEG, when it uh, when you upload a video to, for example, YouTube, it will execute this command. Let's say it will execute this command. It's uh, at the end of the page. Uh, ffmbg i video.avi or m3u, whatever the extension, and then it will convert it to mb4 uh, uh, so users can preview this file. But the thing is, if the content of your file is uh, looks like this one and you save it as m3u, for example, so as you notice, there is uh, something called a file, which is rubber, and then file etc bus wd. You are trying to read the etc bus wd file. When the file is uploaded to the server, it will be converted using this command, and then when you view the file, the command will be executed. So that was a vulnerability in the if mbg thing. It's not something you can blame uh, the developers about, because everything, every every website uh, like YouTube, Facebook was vulnerable anyway. And this trick still works. Actually, I had uh, lots of penetration testings where I used this trick, and it always works. But it was fixed now. I mean, like if you update your server, of course it's fixed. Yeah, direct to traverse a thing. We are still also into the uh, whitelisting. So, for example, the developers is uh, whitelisting that only GBG images is uploaded and he is like doing it the right way. You cannot bypass it, you cannot upload BHP files. What is it you can do in this case? Because as a penetration tester or as a vulnerability hunter, you still have to find something cool, right? You have to convenience the um, bug bounty uh, creators, I mean like the program creators, the owners, or maybe <laughs> your manager if you are doing a penetration testing, you have to find something cool, right? But you are only allowed to upload GBG file. In this case, you can use something called directory traversal. So, if the file is being uploaded in site.bhb slash images slash 2017 slash thumbnails slash image.gbg, 
This is a very long one and it's normal, right? But what if I uploaded my file as named as logo.jpg or logo.png and then I made dot dot slash dot dot slash so it was uploaded to the main website uh, directory and then it replaced the, the file uh, on the, I mean like it replaced the logo of the website. So now I can replace the logo of website with some cool little, some, something like my company name or hack the boy or test if you would like to have, a, to have it as a test. This is what's called directory traversal. You are trying to escape the directory by uploading your file into another directory other than the one it's supposed to be located at. So this is it's just normal. You can just keep your file name as it is, log.gpg, and then dot dot slash, dot dot slash, dot dot slash. This would be your file name. And this is a sample of a uh, uh, vulnerable code. Yeah, it was a uh, copy from uh, Neil, Neil, Facebook team. Yeah, and then scenario number nine. <coughs> so we are still also in the content and the file name thing. So uh, there's a, a, uh, a BHP library called BHPGD. So as a developer, I want to make sure that the file upload is not only having the file name as the GPG, but the content is also GPG. So some developers like to pass it to a PHP function called like image resize or uh, like, but they are mostly depending on the PHP GD thing um, to convert the uploaded file into an image file. I mean, you, they just want to make sure that the file is a GPG file. They want to make sure that you are not uploading a malicious content into the, into the file itself. Yes, so that guy here, he did uh, some uh, cool stuff about this one. This was a vulnerability on a website uh, called uh, uh, Bookfresh. Bookfresh, yes. Yeah, so how to bypass it? You have uh, to pass your image file through the same exact setup of the developers. So you're having your PHP code on your local server or something, and then you pass your, you upload your GBG file as a normal GBG file, and then you see what was the changes in that file. So how did, what, after it, it's being converted, what is still the similarities between the old file and the new file? Because something in the GBG itself could not have been replaced, right? Because, for example, we have seen attackers uploading or injecting their PHP code inside the uh, metadata of the file. Metadata is also a good trick. But this uh, PHP GD thing makes sure that no metadata exists inside the image itself. So to my best, this thing is this uh, uh, thing. Um, there is a, you can do this using a hex, actually. So you are converting the image to uh, a GBG, I mean like using the BHPGD thing. Now we have two files, GBG, uh, the old one, and GBG, the new one, which was converted. You convert both to hex, and then you start searching for similarities. Similarities that uh, matches your payload. For example, if your payload is like 20 character, then you have to find 20 character, uh, 20 similarities, so 20 bits similarity in the code, and then you can replace it with the BHP content you want to inject then upload the page, uh, the, the image. When it, it will be converted, the same bits will still uh, in there and you can execute page as uh, in this uh, screenshot. Uh, this is the link where you can also go for the BOC files. The BOC files you can use in, in, in that link actually. Yes, it's not even important, SVG. Have you ever heard about the guy who took uh, $40,000 from Facebook? It was uh, some exploit in uh, a library called Image Magic. Image Magic had a, a vulnerability where you can uh, execute code on the affected server or the server that uses the Image Magic, and they called it Image Image Tragic. It was not uh, it was known at that time, but that guy was lucky enough to find it on Facebook and get uh, forty thousand dollars for that one. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure if you are able to see the code itself or not, but uh, I cannot maximize this from here. But anyway. Uh, the payload he used uh, just as simple as uh, you are uh, writing, executing a code that says, uh, okay, so he is uh, doing a list, list of uh, the directories at the main directory of the Linux, slash, which is slash, and then sending uh, this uh, as a domain subdomain, as a subdomain to his domain name. So what happens in this case? Because Curl like to do NS, DNS log, uh, DNS queries first, so if the DNS queries goes to the attacker server, he can monitor the logs, and now he knows what the data is in that uh, server. Like what are the list of files, what are the contents of its WD if he would like to, to read it. But as you know, the to, uh, domain uh, names, uh, maximum size is 64, so you, cannot, you can only have 64, so you can like convert it to hex or like base 64, and then starting send, start to send uh, 64 uh, byte for each request. Yeah, so that guy was able to execute comments on Facebook server, which is nice. 
Yeah, scenario number 11, this uh, for all the hackers or like all the, all, all the school people. Uh, in IS version 6 and 6.5, I'm not sure if 7 also works or not because I didn't test it on 7. Uh, so you can just upload your file named as a aspx dot, uh, aspx and then semicolon uh, one dot gpg. So what happens in this case, the IIS server, server itself um, valid, uh, executes only the first extension, but the developer's code always validates at the end extension. But there is a separator. Separator is the semicolon. So IIS, when IIS see a semicolon, it always executes the first, the first extension. It will only execute the first extension. So what happens in this case, the developer, the developer's validating the file name is satisfied because it has the same file name he wants to, uh, to have. Uh, and the ser web server itself will execute the first extension. So the, the attacker is also satisfied because his code is, game is being executed. This is not uh, working anymore. I mean, like, no one is using IIS. 6 or 6.5, but as I said, I'm looking to have every possible uh, technique in uh, one place. So I mentioned this also for old school hackers. DDoS, of course, that was uh, the part of the file size validation. So let's say the developer is validating almost everything. You cannot upload a malicious file, you cannot uh, do directory traversal, you cannot bypass his validation against the file names, but you still have a possibility of the file size not being validated. So what if I can upload, uh, send 100 requests, send 100 upload requests, and each file is like 20 mega? This uh, the server will be DOS, right? It will uh, denial of service attack. So it's still a possibility because the developer has to also validate the file upload size. It's still a possibility also. Yeah, and then uh, scenario uh, 11. Oh, that was the same as, uh, I just go back. Okay, the magic numbers. In uh, WordPress, two point something, uh, the, the, in the plugins page, you, 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 uh, sorry, in the images upload, uh, uploading page, if you uploaded uh, a file, PHP file still, but it contains the image, uh, the magic number, which is like, as I said, for example, in GIF images, it's uh, GIF uh, 98, or uh, sorry, 90, uh, 89 or 87, and then semicolon, and then the normal PHP content. The, B, the PHP at that, uh, the WordPress at that time was only validating the file uh, content, which could be also image, it will work anyway. And then the magic number, which also can be bypassed by injecting uh, this magic number in, into the, your PHP code. And also there is a RCV zip files, also, also this one in Facebook. When it tries to unzip the file, it will execute it as a normal operating system command, which is like weird. Yeah, scenario 14. I'm not sure if you are able to see the payload at uh, the red uh, tagging thing. So in this case, uh, I came across a scenario where the where uh, uh, the website the website that I am pen testing is asking uh, users to up, so apply for uh, jobs on their website or something. So they are asking you to upload your CV, but the uploaded file or the file you are trying to upload is not being validated. The file name is just inserted into the database as it is. No validation against the file name itself. So if the file is inserted again in, into the database directly, you can do SQL injection, right? But you will not see the output because this is something saved into the database side. And only like HR people or whomever can see it. You cannot see the output. At this time, you have to use something called out of band SQL injection. What out of band SQL injection is? You are trying to send like a, a normal request. Uh, okay, normal request uh, in this case means that you have to request an external file that's controlled by you. So you will see that when the developers, for example, is ex when the code is executed and uh, some HR guys is like uh, seeing this or something you will see this as a normal request in your uh, server logs. So now you know that the SQL command you wrote has been executed. But this only, only works with uh, uh, what my SQL server and ASB.NET, unfortunately. It does not work with PHP and MySQL. Uh, yes, this is uh, the last technique. Last technique is uh, something called uh, cross-domain uh, data hijacking or cross-site data hijacking as they like to call it. So in this case, uh, we are exploiting the file, uh, the flash files. So why, why flash files? Yeah, because if you, uh, you you are able to rename the flash file as anything like BDF, GBG, or whatever allowed extension is, and then you upload your file based on the file content itself, the web server or let's say okay the web browser really like to execute anything between uh, a normal object tag as uh, it's like a, a flash file. So for example, this payload, if you contain, if you put your uh, uploaded flash file or GBG file inside this uh, tag, 
It will be executed, uh, object tag, it will be executed as a normal flash file. Using flash file, you can do cross uh, domain requests. Because you can control it, right? You can cross the cross, uh, you can control the cross uh, domain requests in, in Flash. It's always like asterisk, which is like all. They allow they allow all by default. Uh, yes, and now we are going. There is also the URL if you want look to have the POC files. And in a conclusion for the developers, what is it you can do to mitigate those all uh, by passing techniques or by passing validation and stuff? Yeah. So the first thing is always a. Uh, uh, I like it actually when you are using a CDN content delivery network because content delivery networks really like to cache only the cacheable contents like G, uh, JS files, CSS files. I mean, like normal files that can be uh, cached and executed, but they do not execute by default PHP or whatever the, the content is like HTML. They really uh, uh, disregard the, um, the executable files. The first thing always make the, your file as downloadable, not executable. So. Yeah, there is a header called content disposition. Using this header, for example, you can uh, make, uh, you can ask the web browser to always download your file, not execute it. So you are safe for most of the attacks. Uh, because of your file is being downloaded, not executed, the PHP code will not execute, right? So you are safe, mostly. Uh, also, uh, always validate the file size, because you are not, of course, want to get a, like a DDoS attack uh, against your website. Another good technique is always to rename the uploaded file. So whatever the file name is, you should not care. You just rename it like something random file, and then you append your allowed extension to the end of the file. So at this stage, even if it was BHB and uh, that was bypassed somehow, you still will rename it to GBG and make it like a random file so the attacker will not be able to catch it. And if you catch it, it's still a GBG file, right? Uh, yes, those are the advices for the, the developers. Hopefully you... Uh, guys like this, and uh, for people who do read the Ukrainian, I think you will understand what I'm saying here. <laughs>